Hello, friends. Welcome to our virtual worship service. We are in week four of our sermon series on hope. We have been learning about the hope we find in God, and as Christians, we look to God as the source of our hope. We also find that God works through people, and in people whom God sends our way, we also gain hope. Today, we will look at the apostles, and particularly the Apostle Paul, as we continue that same series on hope. But first, let us do our call to worship together. Let us pray. Loving God, your word is a blessing, a blessed thing, a gift to keep us on your path, sweeter than honey and more to be prized than the finest gold. Help us to take your law, made in flesh in Jesus, into our being and live as people in covenant with you. Amen. We have a couple of praise songs to uh, begin our worship this uh, Sunday. The first one is called You Are My All in All, and the second one is Forever. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Taking my sin, my cross, my shame, rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. 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 Give thanks to the Lord our God and King, His love endures forever, for He is good, He is above all things, His love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise, with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, His love endures forever, for the life that's been reborn, His love endures forever, sing praise, sing praise. God. 
Deb is back with us today with a message for the children. Good morning. Did you ever wonder how other people see you? Did you ever wonder how God wants people to see you? Well, I'm sure God wants people to see goodness. So this morning I'm going to show you something. Uh, we're going to pretend this is you. See? And we are to have a good reputation or a good um, vibe about who we are. People need to see through us to see God. So it's kind of like God fills us up with sparkling water. Nice and clear. So you can see right through it. They can see God. And that's what happens when you are telling the truth, when you are trying to be kind, when you are trying to be like Jesus taught us to be, to be good to each other. Then people can see God through us. It's kind of like looking through this clear, pure water. But you know, it's really kind of hard for us to always be good. Sometimes we're not. Have you guys ever told a lie? Yeah, I've done that too. And what happens? It's kind of like this. That lie just sort of seeps out of you. And you know what it does? It clouds what people see. They don't get to see God clearly. It's clouded. It's kind of polluted. That's what happens when we sin. And sin comes easy to us. It shouldn't, but it does. We don't always behave. We don't always listen to the rules. And sometimes, like I said, everybody I know has lied somewhere along the line. We try not to, but we do that. God says in um, Psalm 22 that a clear good reputation is more important than silver or gold. That's how important he thinks it is for us to be clear. Not too clear in there, is it? This is the way we all are sometimes. So how do we fix that? Because we really want God to be shown through us. You can't show through with this very well. Well, you know what? Jesus came here to forgive us to take all of our sins. So when you do something wrong, speak to God. Tell him and ask for forgiveness. And you know what happens? You just kind of dump that out. We start all over. Jesus lets us start with clear again. We get to go back to being just this sparkling example of what God wants us to be. Isn't that beautiful? So I want you to remember to do your best to be the best you can be so that when people look through you, they see God. When they talk to you, when they're near you, it's kind of like just being a little body full of clear, beautiful spirit. When it doesn't happen, something happens. Remember what to do? Ask God, tell him you're sorry. And then just dump yourself out and start over because he'll fill you up with clear water again, clear spirit. That's a wonderful thing for all of us. Not just you children, because we're all children of God. And we've all been at some point where sin entered our life. 
and the world doesn't get to see God so well when it's all clouded up, when it's all polluted. We can empty that out any time. Ask for forgiveness, and God fills us up again, pure and clean, so that we, we can show the world what God's like. So what do people see when they look through you? Do they see God? I hope so. That's what God would like us to do. So you try real hard. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we try and we try. Please forgive us for just not being able to be the sparkling example you wish us to be. We all fall into temptation at different times. We all have sins. I praise you, praise you for sending Jesus who takes all of that away, dumps out all of that and fills us with pure, refreshing, living water, the kind that we get to show the world so that they can learn just how gracious, how merciful, and how loving you are, God. We praise and thank you for that. We praise and thank you for Jesus. And we praise and thank you for the Holy Spirit. We ask you to help us every day to just be a very good example to have a good reputation so that when people look at us they can clearly see you we ask this in Jesus name Amen see you guys next week thank you Deb um, our scripture today uh, is from Romans 828 and it goes like this we know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. And that comes from Romans 8.28. Welcome to the fourth part in our sermon series on hope. We have been looking through the Bible to look for the hope that is offered in Scripture. We looked at the Psalms, the Prophets, and Jesus in the Gospels. Today we're going to look at the Apostles, but more specifically Paul, Paul contributes to most of the New Testament writings, and when we look more closely, we find that Paul always offered hope. You might say that he was the apostle of hope. Now, just a review of our working definition of hope. That definition is the conviction the future will be, in some meaningful way, better than the present. Psalms is a place many recommend to find uh, hope. Um, when we look at the Psalms, the word hope is used 22 times. That is in 150 Psalms. And of course, the concept of hope is used much more. In Paul's letters and in his sermons or speeches in the book of Acts, the references of hope is used 67 times. So why did he have so much hope? Well, let's take a moment and bring some historical context to who Paul was. We know that he was born near Tarsus to a wealthy family. They were wealthy enough to buy Roman citizenship. So Paul was a Roman citizenship, in fact, was born a citizen. That was something of great advantage in the Roman Empire. Paul went to Jerusalem to study to make a name for himself. Now, Paul didn't seem to know Jesus, but after the crucifixion, he knew of a movement that was springing up from Jesus' followers. Jesus' disciples were teaching and leading his movement. Paul volunteered to put an end to this movement and started to round up and imprison Jesus' followers. He is there giving permission to the death of the first Christian martyr, Stephen, and, when he is, and then he is on his way to Damascus to search out for more Christians. And while he was on his way, on the road, suddenly a bright light shone and Paul was thrown from his horse and blinded. He heard a voice saying, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Paul was completely undone done by all this. He was led by the hand to Damascus, and then God led a believer, after about three days, named Ananias to Paul. And it was through Ananias that Paul had what one could say was a conversion moment. He went from being a persecutor of Jesus, uh, Jesus' followers, to one of the apostles. Uh, I'd like to remind you just a little bit that we were talking about a concept from Walter Brueggemann uh, all throughout. Um, of orientation, disorientation, and reorientation. Orientation is when life is going good. Then comes disorientation, when life gets bad. Uh, the pandemic is something that affects all of us, but there can be personal times of disorientation too. 
for example, health problems and so on. Then comes times of reorientation when things get better than they were. Paul was blinded for three days, and that was time for him uh, a, a disorientation. Times of disorientation can be a time of transformation, times of conversion. When things are falling apart in our life, it can be a time when we find a new trajectory in life. And so it was with Paul. Like everyone, he went through different cycles of disorientation and orientation. He was beaten and went to prison, but he also went through times of reorientation and started new churches and faith communities. And this is how it works for all of us. On Paul's first missionary journey, he came to a place called Antioch. When he was there, he was beaten along with Barnabas, and they had to flee for their lives. He makes his way to Iconium, where he was beaten and left for dead on the edge of town. Then he went to Lystra, where they wanted to kill him. This is how it went for him. He has some fruit of his preaching, and then others want to kill him. On his second missionary journey, he ends up in Philippi. He, en he uh, encounters a young slave woman who was telling fortunes, and he was, she was converted and couldn't tell for fortunes anymore, and the owners of the slave woman were quite upset because they were making money from her. They complain to the magistrate who has him thrown in prison, and while in prison, Paul and companions start singing songs of praise. In Acts 16.25, it says, Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. And later we find out the jailer and his family become Christians. Can you imagine the beatings, being thrown in prison, and then singing praises to God? Even in the adversity, he praised God in the midst of the storm. We don't think of giving thanks to God in the midst of things falling apart, but when we do, we can find a peace and be filled with hope. That's why we go to worship, even in the midst of a pandemic. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians 5, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in every situation, because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Paul was afflicted for the rest of his life until he was eventually put to death. Here is a list of some of the things he writes in them uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. It's kind of a longer passage, but it gives you an idea of some of the things that uh, he had to go through. So he writes, are they ministers of Christ? I'm speaking like a crazy person. What I've done goes well beyond what they've done. I've worked much harder. I've been in prison much more often. I've been meet, beaten more times than I can count. I've faced death many times. I received the 40 lashes minus one from the Jews five times. I was beaten with rods three times. I was stoned once. I was shipwrecked uh, three times. I spent a day and a night on the open sea. I have been on many journeys. I faced dangers from rivers, robbers, my people, and Gentiles. I faced dangers in the city, in the desert, on the sea, and from false brothers and sisters. I faced these dangers with hard work and heavy labor, many sleepless nights, hunger and thirst, often without food, and in the cold without enough clothes. Besides all the other things I could mention, there's my daily stress because I'm concerned about all the churches. So it's clear he had a hard life, but even in the midst of all the hardness, he had hope. He had hope because he believed in Jesus, because Jesus died and then rose again. <clears throat> he had conquered evil, hate, and even death. That is something we celebrate on Easter. In fact, every Sunday is actually a mini Easter celebration where we celebrate God conquering evil, sin, and death. And because of that, Paul knew that no matter how, thing, how bad things were or how they were going to turn out, it was going to be okay in the end. Paul knew that the worst things are never the last things because Christ rose from the grave. He writes in 2 Corinthians, We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed, we aren't confused, and we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we are not knocked out. So how is that possible? How is it that he can write these things in the midst of all of this adversity? It was because he believed in the resurrection. It is possible because he knew that no matter how bad things got, it was not the end of the story. In 2 Corinthians 5 he writes, We know that if the tent that we live in on earth is torn down, we have a building from God. It's a house that isn't handmade, which is eternal and located in heaven. 
So he's saying that even if I die, it is not the worst of things. He knew that there is another side where there is the beginning of a new adventure. And he writes, And when the rotting body has been clothed in what can't decay, and the dying body has been clothed in what can't die, then this statement in Scripture will happen. Death has been swallowed up in victory. That is how we can have hope no matter what. In one of his earliest letters, he writes to the church in Thessalonica where someone there had died, <coughs> someone they cared about. And he writes, Brothers and sisters, we want you to know about people who have died so that you won't mourn like others who don't have any hope. Now he wasn't saying that they shouldn't grieve. We all should grieve. But we grieve as people who know that death isn't the end. Often we realize that they are now in a place where there is no suffering or pain, a place where we were meant to be, where, where the kingdom reigns, and that gives us hope. We live, in our li we live our lives differently because we believe that. Paul writes, I'm convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord, not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth, or any other thing that is created. That is what gives us hope. We live our lives differently because of it. We believe that no matter what happened on this side of eternity, there's always hope. We give, this gives those who believe a hope for the future. Now God does not cause sickness to come on his children. We do get sick, but that, that's because there's disease in the world. God doesn't cause tragedy. We live in an imperfect world where there is tragedy. But some of what Paul is saying is that good can come from any tragedy. So Romans 8.28 says, We know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. God says that even in the midst of all that happens, he will bring good from it. In fact, God will force good to come from adversity. Finally, Paul writes this really short letter to the church in Philippi in chapter 1, while in prison in Rome, waiting to find out if he would be executed or not. And he writes, Brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the things that have happened to me have actually advanced the gospel. The whole Praetorian Guard and everyone else knows that I am in prison for Christ. So here he is, thinking that he might die soon, and looks at the whole thing as an opportunity to share Christ with the guards and other prisoners. He saw it as an opportunity to do, to do something good. When we take the things that are pain and ask God to use them for good, God does that. He can make good things come from adversity. That is how Paul was able to have hope in all of his diversity. In every diversity, he saw an opportunity. I wonder if you found opportunity in your diversity and what difference that would make in your life and the life of others. So as we remember our verse from today, we know that God works all things together for good for the ones who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. So let us prepare for our prayer time today and sing together, Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. So uh, we're coming into our prayer time together. Um, we, we think about those who uh, are in need of prayer, those who are in our families or in our lives, friends, people that we know that are either hurting or suffering from um, physical afflictions of one kind or another or other things going on in their lives. And also we need to pray for our Wisconsin conference as we are getting ready to do annual conference. This is an annual event that normally takes place in June, 
but because of the pandemic it was postponed and now we're going to be doing it virtually over three days three different days throughout the month of October and so uh, prayers that all that uh, works out uh, well so let us pray Lord, we come before you, and first of all, Lord, we thank you for those words of hope that uh, Paul brings forth and, and encouragement, even in times of adversity, that we can find opportunity. Uh, even when things seem to be bad, um, God can make them, make good come out of those things. So, Lord, we thank you for those. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we have received and for um, the relationships that we have in our lives. We ask, Lord, that you would listen to our hearts and our minds and hear the prayers that are on our hearts and on our minds as we lift them up to you this day. We pray, Lord, for our churches and our community. We pray, Lord, for our country as it's getting near, nearer to uh, a major election. And we pray for the world as the world uh, fights the pandemic and uh, we hope to you know, have some progress in that. So we ask for your blessing and pray in Jesus' name. And we do ask you to hear us pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So uh, I want to also, oh, I was, I'm sorry, I want to talk about some birthdays today. Uh, we do have some, some birthdays to celebrate. Um, Steve Thompson has had a birthday. Um, Alicia Hoyt, Tova Carson, and look, it looks like Mike Weaver has a birthday too this week. So happy birthday to all of you and to me. Um, and yeah, wishing you the best and happy birthday. And I want to then also remind you uh, about giving that is a part of our worship. And so I want to put this up there so you can see what the address is and uh, how to get to us online if you need to. Um, as I said, it is part of worship. It's a part of what God does through the community is through your offerings. Uh, not only our local community, but we make an impact uh, all over. Um, so you can use the donate button on our website. You can sign up for e-giving if you're a part of the Elmwood Church, or you can just mail your donation to that post office uh, address. So let's um, pray our prayer of dedication together. Let us pray. You have given us so much gracious God, deliverance from captivity, new life, guidance for our living, and Christ for our life. We offer you now just a small portion of all you have given us, praying with faith that you will take all we have and are and use it for your work. Amen. So we had talked um, last week, or I had mentioned, um, and also it's in the email that was sent to you, that we're going to do communion today. So I want to give you just a moment or two to make sure you have your items together. So you're going to want some kind of bread. It could be a cracker even. That would work. Um, some sort of juice would be good. Grape juice is always great. But if you don't have that, if you've got something else, uh, grab that juice as well. So you want those two things together. And the third thing that you want is the liturgy that we're going to be using today. And that uh, liturgy was sent out uh, on the email broadcast. It was also on the website um, under, the, under the news and events tab. So um, hoping that you've got your things together or you're getting together. You can always pause the video if you have to, uh, to go get them. So um, let us uh, get that, let's get that started. Hi everyone, I uh, trust that you are uh, ready and have gotten all your things together. I have my chalice with my grape juice and I have my bread here handy and a candle just for a little bit of uh, decoration and a reminder that Christ is in our midst and in our presence. So the other thing you will need is to have your um, liturgy with you and I hope that you have that printed off and ready to go. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and also with you. 
The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us, died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, and do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, and he gave thanks to you, and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them for us to be the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So now you may go ahead and um, take your bread. I don't know if you have one that you can break like I do, um, but whatever you have, that's fine. And you go ahead and take that bread, the body of Christ, broken for you, and you dip it into your grape juice, the blood of Christ, which has been poured out for you, and then go ahead and take and eat together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that may we go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give others or give ourselves for others 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. Um, I hope you're able to uh, take part in that. If for some reason you um, weren't prepared um, while you were watching this, um, feel free to go back to that part of the video after you are prepared and have your elements together and you can go ahead and, and replay that and uh, follow along with, with this. We do have a, uh, a participate in communion is what I wanted to say. We do have a uh, closing hymn, it's called Trading My Sorrows. I'm trading my sorrow, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord, I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading Say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond this curse. For his promise will endure and that his joy is gonna be my strength. Though my sorrows may last through the night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord, and I say yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Yes, Lord, amen. And I say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. So just a few announcements. Um, we will be changing our virtual church format in the future. Uh, sometime this month we will be moving to recording our in-person service on Sunday and then post it later in the day uh, on that same, same Sunday. So you'll get to see a live service um, recorded. Uh, maybe someday we'll actually get to being able to broadcast it live, uh, doing a streaming version of that. But first, that's what we're going to do is record the service and post it a little bit later on that same day. We are still looking for someone to lead a tech team for our online church. So if you know someone who would be interested in learning, uh, training is available. So you just you don't have to be an expert uh, in helping doing our online church, but uh, not afraid of technology either. Uh, ability to work with teenagers is also very helpful. So contact me, um, Pastor Mike, for more information. Then also to let you know that Harvest Dinner is on October the 28th, so uh, be sure to get your tickets. Please mark your calendars and help support uh, our dinner. Until next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for joining us today.